overall, so much of what Liverpool were trying to do was going through Gravenberch, wasn't it, early doors? Like we were getting the ball to him pretty much at any given opportunity, it felt like. And was that, do you think that was a conscious thing for Liverpool or was that just him always being the man available? I th- Probably a little bit of both, but I think he he offered himself. He was always available to, to get the ball, and he wanted to drive with it. He was happy to operate in tight spaces. I think one of the big things for me was the you know the selection, the the amount of heavy hitters that was you know Klopp had put on the pitch uh, to, from the off really, and he still seemed like the one that was kind of like the leading light in, in all of that, which was really impressive because I know it's only been a handful of games. He's still you know there's, there's not been a whole host of minutes that he's got under his belt but he's slowly starting to find his own really on that left hand side of that midfield for us and you know we was talking about you know there's a big opportunity for one of the three lads in that midfield engine room today to really stake a claim for the game on the weekend and I think in those first early parts he looked like he was really up for that challenge and it was kind of I'm playing because I don't want to be dropped Mm. it was that type of performance and from from the from the start he was he looked like our best player on the pitch at the time. I think, you know, Salah doesn't cover himself in glory with his chance and we'll get into those as well. But I was very impressed with him because I've wanted to see. It's nice when you've got the full compliment around you mm. because you can almost skirk away from your responsibilities and yeah. hide a little bit and kind of play within yourself. But today was a day where someone in that midfield had to step up and he was the first one to, to, to step up in that sense. Yeah, massively. So we'll stick with Gavin Burst, Jamie. I'll come to you on him, mate, because for me, he is the biggest talking point probably from tonight because we spoke earlier yeah. on in the build-up about all three of those midfielders could have sent an opportunity to stake mm. a claim for the weekend there. Yeah. And really... The one who has, for my money, is Ryan Gravenberch. For Elliot was fine, I thought Endo was fine, but Gravenberch went above and beyond that. And we'll talk about the goal and the moments a little bit later on, but I think overall as a package, as a performance, I think he was the star tonight, wasn't he? Yeah, I thought first, probably half an hour, he was the standout player on the pitch. Um, love how comfortable he is on the ball. He's got a really good combination of... He's got skill, but he's got that strength and a bit of pace. Just that acceleration over 10 yards where you can skip past a few players. He did a gorgeous turn at one point. Yeah. That, that was first that half was as well. Very Thiago S from yeah, the outside. Lo- yeah, lo- yeah, lo- yeah, lovely yeah. little turn, yeah. Yeah, it was a bit of a, a bit of a kind of an audition game today for who's going to come in for Jones after after the... Uh, well, we don't, we, won't, we don't want to go in back over that. <laughs> um, and I thought... Both Gravenberch and Elliot were good. Um, I thought we look at, we lost a bit of control when when those when Elliot moved over to. We'll go on to talk about the second half, but yeah, I think certainly first half saw so a man possibly man of the match, Gravenberch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, think so. And just on that, Evel, I'll come to you just to sort of finish and tie a bow in that. Then, do you think going into Sunday, Gravenberch, based on what we've seen tonight, would be the man? I I do yeah I think he's he looks up for it at the moment yeah, I think he said in in his interview how he's kind of settled in with these lads he was happy with the, the you know the business that Liverpool done in terms of rebuilding that midfield yeah. and he's kind of just slotted in quite effortlessly and I think the way he's playing at the moment fitness isn't going to be an issue you mentioned it in the one of the build-ups. You know, he didn't have a, a lot of game time over in, in Germany last season so this lad needs the minutes in his legs mm-hmm. and I think we're we're in a really fortunate position at the moment because all of the new lads that have come in, we've, we've only seen a slither of the potential that they've got, but their base levels at the moment to me seem like fit for purpose. Don't get me wrong, you're like pushing for a title and, and going on deep into you know European competitions is another conversation, yeah. but those things are going to happen in 2024 anyway. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be in, an, in the mix for that point in time, sound, but right now for where we are, we always say, you just want a, a slow burn. You want everybody to be ticking over nicely. You don't want anybody to be you know, absolutely killing it from now and then get burnt out. Yep. And all of these lads look like they're just going to bit by bit build on top of what they're doing so far for us. So he's an ex- an excellent example of that for me because I think the more minutes that you get in the regularity, he's going to be the one, realistically. Someone's going to come out to play that six properly. Mm-hmm. But outside of Sabazlai and McAllister, he's going to be the one that feels as though I should be the next name on that. It's me and Curtis Jones. We're going to be vying for that position constantly, probably for the majority of this season. But performances like that will go a long way in helping him 
nail on a place for himself in that starting eleven. I think that's really important for us. No, it is, mate. And he's come over to Liverpool. He's left Bayern Munich because he wasn't playing. Yeah. So he hasn't come here to be on the bench and be a part of rotation. Yeah. He wants to be starting games of football. And that's such a good problem to have. I mentioned it earlier on the build-up in terms of like competition for places. And we've got that now. Like Curtis Jones, yes, he's missing at the weekend. But you bet your bottom dollar when he comes back to being available after he's going to want his he's shirt back. Play, yeah, yeah. And Gravenberg is going to be like, no, hang on a minute. You know what I mean? Like, I've earned this now. And he's going to want to keep it based on what he does on Sunday. So it's a really fascinating one. It's interesting that he came off when he did as well. That might have been a nod to the fact that he could be the yeah. man to start. And like I say, for me, based on what we've seen tonight, I think he is the man for that job. And I think we touched on it earlier, that's three starts now for Liverpool, two assists and a goal. Yeah, I yeah. mean, not bad. Not and I think bad. he was at the heart of everything as well tonight in terms of defensively. I think it was a really good all-round package from him. So yeah, good night's work. 